Good morning everyone. In this video, we are going to see mobility and accessibility or simply movement and accessibility. In 1959, W.G. Hainson submitted a thesis on accessibility and residential growth in MIT. In his thesis, he explains accessibility as a potential for interaction and mobility is a potential for movement. That was the first thesis about accessibility and mobility. Let's see what it really means. For example, when we consider a good mobility, it, it indicates that the movement will be easy or we can say there is enough space for moving vehicles on the road. Whereas a poor mobility is inability to move around. We have space, but it is over occupied with the vehicle and it is congested. Whereas good accessibility is ability to get what you need or destinations are made closer. You can say uh, we have a lot of choices in transportation mode uh, and a lot of choices in destinations and routes. So we can, it's accessible. Everything is accessible easily. Whereas poor accessibility indicates the destinations are far away from uh, where we are residing. If we want to get something for us, if, oh, if we want to go to city center, if we want to go to commercial area, it is far away and a choice of transportation mode is very less. Or we can say there is no choice of transportation mode and no choice of destination and no choice of route. So this is what accessibility and mobility indicates. So mobility is easiness to move, uh, the facility which give us ability to move, whereas accessibility is easiness to reach out of our destination. And let's see the relationship between both. If we say, uh, if we provide a good mobility, it may contribute to good accessibility too, but not always. Look at the figure. You can see in urban areas, uh, accessibility is very much, but mobility is very poor. Uh, people are very facing difficulty in moving due to a lot of things happening on the road. Whereas in rural area, we have a lot of mobility. There is no vehicle using the way, uh, road or the road is more than sufficient for the vehicles, but accessibility is very less. We have to move around a long distance to reach our destination. Now, coming to the accessibility determinants. What are the fun uh, there are two functions that determine accessibility. First one is proximity of destination. If the destination is nearby, then we can say it is very much accessible. Or we can say if the connectivity to the destination uh, there are a lot of choices for routes. If A, B, C, three routes are available or three modes are available. So the connectivity to destination and the proximity to destination. These are the functions that define accessibility or that make accessible uh, anything accessible. So let's see the implication for planning for mobility, mobility versus accessibility. So planning for mobility, when we plan for mobility, the points we will consider are the amount of vehicle using the road and facilities for vehicles and drivers comfort and priority to vehicles. So in planning for mobility, we will prioritize the vehicles. We will find uh, space for parking. We will provide parking spaces. We will provide uh, all the facilities for the vehicles like uh, fuel stations and the vehicles will feel comfortable in the road. So what will happen if the vehicles are very much comfortable? Uh, we can say mobility means uh, if when we provide uh, mobility, more number of cars will be getting to the street because the facility is very good. So people will prefer to go in their own personalized car. So what happens is we will plan for mobility, then driving will be easy or number of vehicles using the road will also increases. 
which leads to congestion and when the congestion occur then it indicates the demand for more facility then we will plan for mobility for this congestion congested uh, time or we can say uh, we have to extend our plan ex for providing more mobility or we have to provide uh, more width of the road or more facilities for parking and so on so forth so this is an non ending cycle it will it is a cyclic process which has no end it will keep on going and uh, the more we provide the mobility the more will be the congestion and again we have to provide more mobility facilities whereas if you plan for accessibility uh, it in accessibility it focus on livability it provide it is focusing on people it is prioritizing people so they will in accessibility point of view we will encourage the people to walk we will encourage the people to use public transport so that they don't have to take their car out of their shed or they don't have to depend on their own self their own own car in order to reach their destination see if you have a very good public transportation facility you can reach your destination from your doorsteps through the trans public transport uh, facilities then why would we use a car why would we take a stress to drive we will take that public transportation right so this a plan for accessibility is addressing the need of all within the community so uh, we will consider the need of the people using bikes so that um, and in accessibility point of view i told you uh, there are two functions one one first one is proximity another one is connectivity so when we reduce the distance to destination how can we reduce the distance to destination either we can provide the facilities nearby the residential area itself for example if the commercial a small commercial area is set up nearby the residential area people don't have to take their car to reach that Uh, shops or supermarkets they uh, instead they can walk around from their home to the nearby shops so definitely they will prefer to walk and when they prefer to walk or when they prefer to uh, use public transportation the number of vehicles in the street will get reduced and when the number of vehicle reduces it reduces the congestion then it also give us a good mobility so when all the facilities are provided within the reach people will try to use their walking ability or their uh, cycling for reaching their destination which ultimately reduce the congestion and that will lead to more mobility so by considering these two point of planning perspective we come to know that planning for accessibility is much better than planning for mobility so how can we achieve this accessibility so when uh, we plan for land use land use planning is a major part which provide accessibility when we plan for land use or when we use the land use planning we have to consider this accessibility point we have to use the land use for mixed use home work and leisure should be there within the reach so that people don't have to depend on their car to reach each destinations if they have if they can walk to their work if they can walk to their leisure then there is no need of using cars instead maybe they will if they feel like to lazy to walk they may use bicycles because it's very nearby no need to use a car so this is what we transportation engineers do while planning land use and obviously we have to provide shortcut routes in order to reach destinations and obviously the facility of public transport public transport should reach every corner of the rural as well as urban area so that people don't have to take their cars for their movement so in conclusion we can say for 
getting a better accessible city what we will do is we have to make use of the land use planning with the transport planning so in land use planning we will provide almost all facilities nearby the point proximity is met in land use planning so that we can reach all the facilities within our walking distance and in transportation planning we should provide the connectivity we should provide the facility for using public transport so this is how we provide accessibility as well as mobility so that's all about mobility and accessibility. Music